Why don't you give me a sign? Like the sea that leaves a trail along that shore It's not your problem, it's mine Everybody thinks that I'm okay Sometimes I think I am too I'm on the outside looking in I'm waiting for the shockwaves to begin Oh, won't you let me hold you for one time Just a rainy day In a London cafe A London cafe Girl back home. Is it a kid? No. Do you? Hi, I'm Sophia from the fan carpet, and we are here at the premiere of Firebird. Considering it's my feature debut, it's pretty amazing. I think it's it's beyond wildest dreams that we are getting such a wide release in the UK and also hundreds of cinemas in the US. So it's it's humbling, um, and I'm just really grateful to the whole team who made it happen so I hope people people resonate uh, with the story and <clears throat> I hope people resonate with the story and will go and see it in cinemas this weekend. Hi I'm Tom Pryor and I'm the lead in Firebird. And uh, what could you tell us about your character in Firebird? He uh, Sergei is a conscript who's completing his last few months of the Soviet army conscription. Uh, he simply can't wait to get out of the army, but then basically when a fighter pilot turns up, it kind of boils him over and they embark on an illicit love affair. What is it about this film that made you want to create it? I think the really, really simple, tragic, beautiful human story. Um, it reached me through a friend at Berlinale and I read it at home and, and just cried, literally. Just felt I have to turn this into a film. What was your experience like being a part of this film? Very long and very deep, like in emotions and experience, um, you know, going to Russia, getting to meet the real Sergei, uh, whose memoir the film is based on, um, that was just like an incredible uh, way to be able to immerse really into not just a story but into a character. Does he give you any advice that really sort of helped um, get into his character? It was less of advice, more about like almost how he was and who he was. He was an amazingly courageous man, like amazingly brave, and also like this really sunny, really light. And that actually was really reassuring for me actually when coming to play the character because it wasn't sort of like really ultra heavy, but actually just kind of going, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of go after love and dare to go after love, particularly in an environment which is so dangerous. Were there any challenges you faced while making this film? A lot of, I mean, first of all, to get a independent film financed in this day and age is very, very tough. And uh, obviously, shooting a period piece uh, with 50 plus locations and uh, visual effects, it's, uh, it's my first film, so it was quite a big learning curve. So what would you tell us in terms of what you learned? What was the most helpful uh, thing that made you, you know, create and be a director of this film? Believe in yourself. Everything is possible. Uh, trust your own feeling. Don't believe what others say, but do as you feel is right. And really work on something until you feel that it's there, that it really feels right. Did you have any particularly funny or memorable moments uh, that stick out to you that you could tell us about from filming? It could be in editing as well. Um, but probably the funniest moment of all was the first shooting day because we um, have several intimate scenes that take place in the sea and uh, actually having the actors in 12 degrees freezing Baltic Sea was quite a, uh, quite a challenge. 
I'm sure they'll remember that, uh, that scene. Well, as it's based on a true story set in the Soviet Union at the height of the Cold War and of such a intensive type of relationship and, and, a, and exploring friendship and something more, for me it was really, really amazing to get so deep into a character and be able to get so deep into um, a story. So I'm a writer on the film as well as, as one of the actors and to be able to bring a story to screen which is about a type of love affair which almost seemed impossible actually in the Soviet Union at the time has been like a real joy and I think it's a cinematic background which audiences haven't really seen before. Firebird is a, uh, true, based on a true story and it's a story of forbidden love in the Soviet Air Force at the height of the Cold War uh, when a young private who is serving the last month of his military conscription falls in love with a fighter pilot and then their love story through the years. Well, obviously in light of everything that's going on in Ukraine as well, my co-star being like actually stuck in Ukraine, not able to come, it's a kind of little bit of a sort of microcosm for a macrocosm, you know, like a traditional family values has been something which, you know, has been pushed for a long time, which is not acceptable anymore in terms of like modern day human rights. And I think that really, you know, I really trust that the film will be able to reach out to people and be able to give them like more courage, more hope, to be able to like live authentically and see an example of a relationship where people went again and saw the odds to be together. Well I think it's first of all a really important story because of the the type uh, of story and the place and time. Um, but I think most importantly in light of what's been going on, especially the last two months in Ukraine, it's important to to really remind ourselves that love is love and everybody has the right to love themselves similarly like everybody has the right for their freedom and to live as they wish to live and and I think the communities in Ukraine and Russia are under especially strong stress at the moment uh, so it's it's good to lend some uh, awareness and some support and some love to them well I think when you know, having, let's say, representation on the screen, for example, that's been something that we've got a lot of compliments and a lot of gratitude about, is actually seeing, like, a true love affair actually to such scale as well has been really impactful for people. It kind of allows people to maybe even give themselves some forgiveness or a bit more of a break. I mean, some people have written to me saying, like, watching the film has been a bit like receiving a big hug, which I honestly find, like, really heartwarming. They, they, some people also written saying that, you know, they'll treat people in the LGBTQIA plus community with a much greater respect as a result of seeing the film. Well, we were actually introduced with Tom uh, already, I think, end of 2014, when I had the first draft of the screenplay, and... Uh, he has this, well for me for the first moment he embodies the character of Sergei. He has this really nuanced performance and this feeling really that's very, very much in the way he, he composes himself rather than just speech and I think that's really an amazing quality in an actor to be able to give a performance in the small nuances and that's what we really looked at uh, for the whole cast because at the time and the place in the 1970s in Soviet occupied Estonia there was no such language if you were part of the LGBTIQ community you would face five years in a hard labor camp in Siberia so people communicated mostly with looks and body language rather than you know discussing about uh, their sexuality <laughs> Well, yeah, he really is an astonishing talent in the sense of being able to actually... He barely spoke English when we first met, but he had the quality of Ramon. And so he kind of jumped all feet in to, to learn English and also to be able to you know, get really dip, dive into the role. And, um, you know, a lot of our chemistry came from actually, like, our physical interactions because the level of our uh, conversation was obviously not able to be that significant because I didn't speak that much Russian, he didn't speak that much English, so it was all about a lot of trust. Uh, we got about two and a half thousand uh, audition tapes. So we did months of auditions here in London, uh, 
we got tapes from like Berlin, from Australia, from all over. And finally, we had an audition when Oleg walked into the room. And we met so many amazing actors, but none of them felt right. And it's, it's almost impossible to describe it, but when he walked in, it was like, this is Roman, both of us uh, and our casting director. The only problem was that he didn't speak almost a word of English. So he had to work really hard for about three months to be able to do the role. And uh, I think he did an amazing job. It's, it's really sad that he can't be with us today because he's actually a Ukrainian and he's in Kiev defending his city at the moment. What would be ideal for you to do, uh, to do next after this? Of course, I'm sure you want to enjoy this, but what, what's next for you? Honestly, I'm really interested to play, I'm like very role driven, I'm really interested to play sort of like action type spy thriller stories. Um, I certainly wouldn't say no to something like a Marvel, but you know, also I really also love like very strong human drama stories which are about overcoming uh, significant challenges, whether that be like sports related or health related, and, and really like s telling more stories which are about spreading compassion, hope and love. Oh, that's great. Thank you very much. I have actually a couple of uh, stories that I've been working on. Uh, one of them is a refugee story from 1944, but uh, I think at the moment we're really putting our focus on letting Firebird spread its wings and you know, the theatrical release across the UK this week. Next week we are in the US at 125 cinemas releasing, so it's quite, quite a uh, busy but also amazing time. Oh, that's wonderful. Enjoy tonight. Thank you. Thank you for watching The Fan Carpet. Please follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram for more. Run! You won't tell anyone. I tried so hard to forget you, but I can't. I'm here on the largest of the Balearic Islands, Mallorca, with the turquoise waters of the Mediterranean Sea, beautiful mountainous landscape, the thriving city of Palma, quaint little market towns, a growing number of luxury hotels. It's no surprise that the likes of Audrey Hepburn and Elizabeth Taylor like to holiday here. So come and join me as I take you round Mallorca. Thank you for watching the fan carpet. If you like this video, be sure to click that thumbs up button at the bottom of your screen. And also be sure to subscribe to the fan carpet YouTube channels. They're absolutely free. That's so much fun too. Be sure to check out the official website, thefancarpet.com. Also, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to stay up to date with reviews, competitions, the latest news, and so much more.